But now it's last chance saloon for our prospectors. Right, guys. This is the sum total of the gold you have found so far. <laughs> Three grams. Now, given that next time you've got to make something out of this gold, I think probably we need a little more. What do you think? <laughs> Seriously. So, Mike and Mike, the rock that you mined up on the mountain, we've got that and there's another five sackfuls. It may or may not contain gold, but this is the week we're going to find out. So if you can try and extract gold from that rock, that would be a very good thing. Okay. Mm. okay. Glad you're coming. <laughs> now, Cathy, you're going to go to the beach. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, it's not going to be exactly a holiday. Mm. Uh, you're going to be trying to find gold from the sand on the beach. Oh. Mm. <laughs> and Ellen and Jonathan, you have got the gold prospector's dream. A treasure map! <laughs> 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 However, it is going to take your science skills to interpret that map and hopefully find a little pot of gold Ooh. at the end of it. Ooh, yeah, now you've got good. three days, as usual, to crack these challenges. You've got all the bits and bobs in the sawmill, anything around here that will help, and of course, the magic chest. So get exploring. <laughs> tube, tube, that's got to be for a chemist. I think this is a place <laughs> to I bet this is for you. Oh, for me, for me. That could be ours. Yeah, what's that? Uh, that's what I think it is. We're going to have some fun chemistry. What is Whoa, it? It's a weird oh, it's a secret. I'll show you later. Jonathan, I think all we've got is a map. Yeah, I think so. Right. So they've got to discover gold on the beach and a pot of gold using a treasure map. The Mikes have got to finish off a previous challenge. A while ago, they mined gold rock in the mountains. Now they've got to get the gold out of that rock. And if that isn't enough, it started to rain. So, Mike, if there is gold in this rock, how on earth are you going to get it out? Oh, well, over the first two days, Mikey L has got to build some rock crushing device right? mm. to crush this rock up to fine powder, which we'll then pan, we'll roast, uh, and then on the third day, I'll react that with mercury to get the gold out of it. Isn't there one fatal flaw? Mm -hmm. You haven't got any mercury. Yeah, I have. It's in there. Cinnabar. Don't but be ridiculous. No, where? <laughs> Isn't this... this red stuff here. Yeah. That's cinnabar. If I heat, uh, grind this rock up to a fine powder mm. and heat it, I'll get mercury. You see, come back at the end of the day. We'll have some mercury for you. All right, that's a deal. Yeah. So the first stage to get any gold particles out of the rock they mined is for Mike L to crush it all to powder. Well, that broke pretty effectively. And the good news is that it's broken down into these little tiny crystals. The obvious problem is that 90% of the rock's gone, so I'm going to have to think up a different system. But I'm confident we can do this as a real bulk process. Mike B's also grinding rock, but instead it's the pink cinnabar rock from the trunk. Well, cinnabar's how mercury occurs naturally, so if I grind this up and heat it, the mercury should be released. And we really need mercury. With only three days, it's going to be the quickest way to get the gold particles out of Mikey L's rock. This is every kid's dream to have a treasure map. Yeah. All what right. Does it say? On day three, a helicopter will drop you at the ice lake. Face north and ascend 100 meters in height to find buried treasure. So we've got to measure altitude. We've got to find a way of measuring altitude, haven't we? Yeah. The other thing I can tell you is that the treasure will be buried in a tin. So we can mm. use a metal detector. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The metal detector can come back to its own. Okay. Let's get going. Let's put this okay, in the Okay. Well, place. just just before you go. If you could spare some of today to help Cathy collect sand. We've got treasure to find. I know, but Cathy needs a bit of help on the beach collecting black sand, so can we go and do that first? OK. Let's yes. all go to the beach. I think I'll look after this. Okay. So Ellen and Jonathan have to find a way of measuring altitude to get their treasure. Any other gold we get will come from what nature provides in these mountains. The scientists have just three days, but it takes nature thousands of years to wash the gold out. It gets carried down the rivers where the large flakes are deposited. By the time the river reaches the sea, it's carrying only the tiniest gold particles. This beach is the last place to capture the gold before it's lost forever. And for Cathy, the trickiest gold assignment yet. All right then. This is what we've been looking for, Kate. This long stretch of blackish sand. OK. And it's because the tiniest bits of gold get carried down by the rivers into the sea and dumped in the sea. And when the sea has a load of energy, like when there's a big storm and the waves are very powerful, then they're powerful enough to carry those heavy little bits of gold up the beach. 
But when they roll back again, they've lost their energy, so it stays here. So that's how it ends up, just on this lip. So why are you looking for black sand? The black is, you know, things like iron ore, so some heavy metals that hang around with the gold. Right. So you can't see the gold, it's just much too small. But you can see the black, and the black tells you that this is where the gold is. Michael, biologist and car mechanic, is scaling up the crushing of the gold rock by building a machine. Mike B is hoping to get mercury out of this powdered cinnabar by heating it up. The mercury vapour should condense in the test tube. And just in case any mercury vapour escapes, Mike's wearing a mask. Mercury is so clearly identifiable. And you can't mistake it, it's the only liquid metal there is. So I think it's a matter of, again, of being patient and just seeing, seeing if any mercury condenses over. It's like scraping icing off a chocolate cake, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it doesn't taste as good. It doesn't go very deep. You see the grey sand there. Yeah. But it's quite a long stretch, so we'll get some. But let's get it quickly, because these sand flies are driving they me. They are a nightmare. <laughs> right, I've made this hammer mechanism. I got hold of a broken tow bar from the yard. I've welded it to this wheel thing, which is really, really heavy. And then, to stop all the rock flying off, and believe me, this is really heavy, I've got this sort of pestle and mortar arrangement here, this container made out of a really big steel drain pipe. Because this is so heavy, I've used a double pulley system with a little pulley here at the bottom and a big pulley at the top. That means it should only be half as difficult to lift it, but I do have to pull the rope twice as far. So we've got a giant crusher for the gold rock, but have we got any mercury? What we're seeing is mercury being formed from the cinnabar. And the mercury is uh, condensing on the inside of the tube. You can see that shiny metallic, see little globules of it forming. And this is the mercury that will hopefully get the gold out of the crushed rock. The team have got used to panning for gold over the last few weeks, but panning for beach gold has very special problems of its own. This really is worse than looking for a needle in a haystack. I just can't imagine we're ever going to find any gold, and it's so hard. This sand is so heavy. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's because of all these um, iron ores and everything else. I just don't know how you can separate off such tiny little grains of gold from what's already pretty heavy in the first place. Well, you can do it by panning, but it is a pain. I think we should go back and try some other methods. OK, I'm all for that. In case all else fails, there's the buried gold up in the hills. To find it, Jonathan and Ellen need to make an instrument to measure a 100-metre change in altitude. They're experimenting with a plastic tube filled with water. OK, so we've got to measure the altitude, haven't we? Yeah. So the best thing is probably the only thing that's reliable change as you go up is the air pressure. It gets less. Yeah, that's right, because there's less air above us. Mm -hmm. So we've got uh, a tube of water here, and at the moment, both the ends of the tubes are open to air, so there's the same air pressure on each thing, so they're the same height. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, if you block it off with your finger, and I'm, we went up a mountain, that would stay the same pressure. But not this one. But not this one, so I can... Yeah, that's right. So if I suck on this, because the air pressure will go down when you go up the mountain. That should change. So it moves, right? And that difference is proportional to how far up you're going to go. So we can use this to make an altimeter. Jonathan's confident that this simple piece of kit is the answer to measuring altitude, but to be sure, they'll need to test it up a hill tomorrow. I'm trying to see if I can use a magnet to separate out the black sand from the gold. Because the black sand contains iron ores 
and they are magnetic, so they ought to jump towards the magnet, whereas the gold um, isn't magnetic, and so that should be left alone by the magnet. Just bits running around. So I can see that there must be bits that contain quite a bit of iron in here. Now, if I really want to try to separate it, if I put the magnet into a plastic bag and hold it just above the surface, I ought to get the bits of iron jumping up to the magnet and that could leave behind the gold. But I don't think I'm getting very much material. And I don't think I'm going to be able to separate out the gold just using that. Well, Mike B promised me mercury by the end of the day. Has he got any? This is what we've collected, you see this? Oh yes, look at it. But it's still very impure, there's lots of muck in there from bits of quartz left over and everything else that was in the quartz. But here's a magic trick, I hope it's going to work. If you squeeze dirty mercury through a chamois leather, it should come out the other side clean. So it'll squeeze through the fibres of the leather. Oh, look it, at that! Yeah. It's like little ball bearings yeah. coming out. Not all of it's coming out, but some of it is. And how's this mercury going to help you get the gold out of the rock? Because that's the main aim of this challenge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, now we've got the mercury. Tomorrow we grind up the rock, the gold-bearing rock. Right. To a very fine powder, and we mix it with uh, some of the mercury. And the mercury forms an amalgam, what's called an amalgam, with the gold. Gold dissolves in the mercury, and then we heat the amalgam, and it re uh, we can recover the gold. So the mercury and the gold will separate? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. God, it's clever stuff, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at that. But the problem is we haven't got very much mercury and we've got lots of rock. So the plan is that the mercury will dissolve the gold out of the rock, which Michael's still crushing. What do you reckon to combining yeah. rough science with the world's strongest man? If that gold panning, you know, with black sand, you know, you just say, how many hours can you gold pan? How many tons of quartz rock can you smash while saving the powder? Are you saying you're the world's strongest man? No, far from it. <laughs> but I could do with the help of one. A new day and we haven't seen any gold yet. The weather's closing in and there's an ominous silence at the sawmill. We ran out of welding wire, didn't um, weld it hard enough. And what weld there is is now broken. Right. So that's out of operation. OK, so what's the next option? Because we need crushed rock by the end of today, well, don't we? Well, I can't see any other option than going back to the sledgehammer, but right. to stop the shards flying off everywhere, do it in a cardboard box. So um, where does this bit come in, then? Well, mm -hmm. once we've broken the rocks down a little bit smaller, yeah. we can put them down this tube. Right. And then smash them with this big, heavy half shaft. Right, and pound. And pound. And that makes the stones very, very small. OK. Is this stuff fine enough to work with? Well, that you have picked up isn't. We need it all to go to powder. Right. So after this, we put it through a sieve yeah. to take out the kind of stuff you were holding then. Yeah. And um, the powder that goes through the sieve or the colander needs yeah. to be ground down with a pestle and mortar to make right. it very fine. So it's very labour-intensive. It is, isn't yeah. it? All right, well, I'll go and bash with a sledgehammer, if you like, and I'll leave you to pound Yeah, that. feel free. <laughs> <laughs> it's all hands on deck. We've got to increase our stash of three grams if we're ever going to make a pure gold souvenir next time. Maybe our best hope lies with a homemade altimeter. Can it lead us to treasure? So we need to put the water in. Yeah, and actually, I coloured it with tea. Ah, brilliant. You say when? Stop, stop. Ooh, lots of bubbles. When? <laughs> I think we've got too much. The treasure hunters have turned their plastic tube and water into an Earl Grey altimeter. To see if it works, we're going to brave the elements and head up Sentinel Rock, a well-known local landmark. OK, well... This is Sentinel Rock right here, right. so um, what do we need to do? OK, well, this is the base level, and we know the Sentinel Rock is 50 metres above here. OK. So we need to set this to zero, basically. OK. And we simply do that by uh, closing this off. Yeah. We can now, as we go up... Yeah. Um, ..we go up in altitude. Yeah. This is going to remain at that pressure here. Yeah. But this one's going to change because it's open. OK. So because you've gone up, there's less air pressure pressing down, so the water will rise? Yeah. I just need to put a zero line on here. OK. It's a reference. Pour 
Poor Mike Leahy. He's stuck on one long rock-crushing treadmill. Right, the stuff that gets through the colander ends up in this bowl here, but it's still no way fine enough. So, we take the finest off using this sieve. Anything that fails to go through, we stick in this container. It can then be ground with a pestle and mortar. In the meantime, this is what we want. I'm now panning it to remove the quartz, which is lighter. That's this sort of light-looking band here, which is effectively sand. What we're left with at the back is the mineral-rich rock, which we hope contains the gold. Slowly, Mike's reducing the six sacks of rock down to a small gold-rich residue. Will the treasure hunter's homemade altimeter work? We know this hill's 50 metres high, but will that show up as a change in water level? Well, it's about a centimetre difference. Yeah, not as much as I'd hoped. But it has moved in the right direction. It certainly has. OK, so, so what do you need to do? Now. So those bars I put in there correspond to 50 metres. Right. So now when we get back, we just draw one twice as big and that'll be our... That'll reference be your reference. That's where we get the treasure. In another attempt to extract beach gold from the heavy sand, Cathy's resorted to a rough science favourite, a sluice box. Over the weeks, the scientists have got better at making sluice boxes to get gold out of sand and gravel. Now Cathy's taking it one step further with the Rolls-Royce of sluice box technology. This is my new improved sluice box and it's supposed to be a more subtle design so it can catch these tiny, tiny little particles of gold. Now, I'm going to run water through here and put little holes in here so that it floods down here continuously in a nice, even way. This is going to be tipped up at an angle, something like this, and I'm going to spoon on the sand so it'll run down here as a kind of splashboard and then fall onto this sluice box. But instead of using, you know, bits of wood or anything like that, I'm going to line this with fleece material, so just like this. Um, and the, just the tiny little hairs in here will actually catch the gold, I think. Um, they'll nestle down in here and the sand will get washed down. It's got to be a lot more subtle because the black sand and the gold are both of, you know, quite high density. And I hope it's going to work. Jonathan's dusting off the final piece of kit the treasure hunters need. A few weeks ago, he turned a couple of old radios into a metal detector, but it didn't find any gold. This time, will it find treasure? OK, should try it out? Yep. So it works. Pretty good. After a long day, the scientists finally get to relax. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, no, Jonathan, we need you tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It's the last day and we've got to do the treasure hunt. The plan was a trip to an ice lake by helicopter, but it's raining so hard we can't even see the mountains, let alone fly up there. So our original treasure map is now useless. Nice weather for ducks, not for helicopters. But we, want, we still want treasure. You're going to get treasure, just not using this. <laughs> OK, here are your new instructions. <laughs> Listen very carefully. I'm listening. You're going to be taken to a point. You need to advance until your altitude has increased by 80 metres. OK. Look for an island of punga trees. Right. And on that island, there's a clearing and a slippery log. That's where you should begin your search. <laughs> Don't drown. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Armed with new instructions, altimeter and metal detector, the treasure hunt can begin. I've enlisted the help of Chris Morris, a mountain guide. He's buried the treasure 80 metres up a mountain track and is now leading them to the starting point. Well, guys, the treasure's up that mountain. The treasure's up there? Yep. I'm going to set this it. thing up. Is it open? Yeah, it's open at the moment, so it just needs closing here. 
What should happen, Chris, is that these levels should change as we go up. Okay. And we marked on here from our calibration what 100 metres should be, so we should be just under that, I guess. Let's go for it. Once they've climbed to an altitude of 80 metres, their next clue is to look for some punga trees. I'm helping Cathy get her sluice box started. What I need to do is get a really nice constant flow of water over here. OK. And it's really important. It's got to be gentle and smooth and constant. Right. And when we just chuck buckets on, like last time, yeah. that with these tiny particles of gold, they'll just go whooshing down. They'll get okay. carried away. So I need to control the water really finely. So could you just switch on the water over there? Yeah. And um, I'll check out the, um, the spray. Great. Now, it's fantastic, it's like a water feature. <laughs> Build one for your garden. Yes. No, you can, you can do the first spoonful of sand if you like. Can I? So, so just about sprinkle that much? it on, yeah. Marvellous. And how are you going to get the gold out of the material? Ooh. Tweezers? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've put all those nails right up in the air so I can rip them out easily, yep. wrap up the material, and yeah. then give it a really good rinse in water. So you can then just pan it all off again as, as usual. That's it. The mics are a step closer to getting their gold. They're now mixing their two vital ingredients, concentrated gold rock and mercury. We're hoping that the gold that's in the ore will form an amalgam with the mercury. But we've no idea how much gold is in there. It could be parts per million in that ore. It could be very... I don't think it's a very rich ore. So the amount of amalgamation we'll get and the amount of a mercury amalgam is going to be small. Any gold that is there should combine with the mercury to make an amalgam. It's then squeezed through chamois leather to get rid of the excess mercury. This time, it's not what's being squeezed out that's important, it's what's left inside. Whoa, Ooh, yeah. Stretch this leather out a little bit. So this is the amalgam then, that doesn't look like mercury, it's certainly very different. So the mercury might have got gold out of the rock, but now, how will they get the gold out of the mercury amalgam? It's onwards and upwards for the treasure hunters. And a glimmer of hope for Cathy. Hey, there's gold. It's actually working. What do you think, Helen? It's just under 50 metres, which means we're about halfway. If they're right, then it's 30 metres higher to the treasure. Now, Mike, word has reached me that you're doing something magic with a potato. Yeah, this is an old-time prospector's method of recovering gold from amalgam. Right. What we're doing, we're using half a potato. Yeah. And we cut a hollow here and we'll put the amalgam in. OK. And as the potato bakes, the mercury diffuses, hopefully leaving gold in what's left of the baked potato. No, really? So, yeah, if you want to put the amalgam in there... Is this seriously going to work? Apparently it does, yeah, yeah. So you just stick that on there, uh -huh. the mercury will diffuse into the potato flesh and we'll be left with a little bit of gold, will we? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, That's fingers amazing. crossed. Well, I would just can't right. wait to see this. So bake for 50 minutes at gas mark 7. The mercury should evaporate into the potato, leaving our precious gold behind. It looks intriguing, but I think it might be up to Ellen and Jonathan to save the day. So I think we're there. That's pretty close, isn't it? It's excellent. And if we look this way, See all those tree ferns? There's definitely an island. Yeah, and those covered in hunger. Those yep. are what the tree ferns are. Let's Good try enough. here, because if it's not here, we can always go up. Is Chris telling us something? <laughs> Chris isn't telling them anything. The altimeter's got them to the 80-meter point, and they've found the punga trees. Now they're on the lookout for a clearing and a slippery log. Then it's down to the homemade metal detector. If the detector doesn't work, they might have to dig up the whole clearing. OK. Just start somewhere, I suppose. Yeah. Well, it's nothing really big down there. It depends how big the gold is, right? We hope it's gold. That's true. Maybe. Let's keep on going. OK, I'll mark this as one possibility. Yeah. There's something quite big there. 
definitely. That's a great metal detector. Yay! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it requires a key. <laughs> ah, key. Chris might know about this. Do you know anything about a key? No, no, I don't have a key on the phone. Really? No. So do we head back, Chris? I think we will. Put it in my bag. Is there anything else, Chris? <laughs> Put in your bag, nothing. Just drop it in here. Yeah. Are you sure you haven't got the key? Well, what is in that treasure box? It's the end of day three and the search for gold is over. How much came out of Kathy's black sand? And what's happened to the Mike's potato? Right, guys, it's crunch time, because next time you've got to make something from pure New Zealand gold. Now, I can tell you that it has rained 10 centimetres in the last <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> so how has that affected you? Well, Kathy, you did make the most executive sluice box I think any of us have ever seen. Please line. How effective was it? Well, there's my Whoa. gold. <laughs> That's amazing. And our mics, you started off with six sacks of rock mm. and a funny pink rock. You crushed mm -hmm. the rock, you squeezed mercury out of a rock, you got an amalgam, you put it in a potato. <laughs> Has it worked? <gasps> oh, my God! <laughs> That's amazing. That is absolutely incredible. No! <laughs> <laughs> right, you two. You had a working altimeter, but did yeah. it mean you found the treasure? Depends on if you have the key. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal the treasure first. <laughs> <laughs> In that case, I can reveal the key. All right. <gasps> right. Ba -ba -ba. Ready for the big moment? Yeah. <gasps> oh. Sure what is it? Show us. What is it? What is it? Show us. It's a big one. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh well, my. that's Fantastic. it. You can add that and the potato gold and the fleecy gold all to your total <laughs> and uh, come up with something magical next week. What still do you don't think it's going to be all that big somehow. <laughs> yeah. mm. Find out what they make on the next Rough Science. Yeah. <laughs> next time, the team face their final challenge to transform those flakes of gold into a pure golden souvenir. You could win whatever they make. All you have to do is log on to www.open2.net and enter our online competition. While online, you can also request a free rough science booklet and get details of all Open University programmes.